There has been an explosion in the use of e-cigarettes, also known as vapes, among teenagers who are attracted by the appealing flavors and ease of use. We interviewed students who actively vape to understand their perceptions amid recent news coverage of its health effects. How often do you vape? Every hour, I'd say. Pretty much daily, uh, whenever I feel a little bit stressed. Um, whenever I feel like it. <laughs> um, maybe twice, three times a day. Um, I vape occasionally, like a few times a week. Uh, Nicotine-based, but they also have flavor. I use uh, flavor-based uh, vaping products. Flavor-based? Uh, I use uh, a blueberry flavor. Uh, Strawberry is my favorite. Currently, I have this Hawaiian flavor. It's uh, pineapple, orange, guava. Yeah, I, uh, I use uh, THC uh, vapes uh, generally, actually. Um, I honestly started vaping with friends and then I got my own vape from one of those friends. From my friend actually. Uh, he, he got me into vaping. So last year I realized that I was hitting a lot of my friends' jewels so I kind of wanted to get my own thing so I wasn't using their product. But then over the summer I was um, using cigarettes, so I guess this is a way to kind of stop that as well. No, I honestly think smoking is disgusting. I just started because my friends were doing it. Um, I think I've seen like a few things on the social media here and there, but I've, I'm honestly not aware of what's really there. I've seen a lot of videos on Instagram. I don't care though. <laughs> I don't know about any in Canada, but I know that uh, in some parts of the states they're starting to ban it. Uh, it has. Um, honestly, it's starting to make me want to quit because I've learned about so many health concerns about vaping, and I think it's not good for me anymore. Um, not really. I'm not gonna stop vaping. It hasn't. <laughs> I don't give up. <laughs> As of October of 2019. There have been 1,600 cases of vaping-associated lung injury that have been reported to the Center for Disease Control, known as the CDC, across 49 states in the USA. We interviewed respirologist and professor of medicine, Dr. Martin Kolb, for more insight. So vaping-related uh, cases uh, of lung problems have been reported primarily from the United States. There are a few cases uh, from Europe that I'm aware of uh, in the United Kingdom and I think in, uh, in Spain, yeah, but predominantly it's from the United States. Due to the reported adverse health effects, vaping has been undergoing serious regulation in recent times. In the United States, the Trump administration announced that they would be banning all flavored vapes and e-cigarettes in September of 2019. E-cigarettes have also been banned in Brazil, Singapore, Seychelles, Uruguay and India. We also know vaping can be dangerous. Whatever substance it is, and if it's uh, something you buy on the street or you buy in a, in a certified store, it, it's still a lot of unknowns in there. Um, clearly, advocates for vaping say that it is a helpful means to help people with smoke cessation, yeah, but that would mean you only have nicotine in the vaping solution, um, and that has to be controlled, and then it has to be accompanied by a sort of a smoke cessation program. Um, but uh, until we know more, having a stricter legislation is important. The CDC analyzed a subset of patients suffering from vaping-induced lung illnesses. Many patients reported a gradual increase of symptoms, including breathing difficulty and chest pain, before hospitalization. Some also reported mild to moderate gastrointestinal illness, including vomiting, diarrhea, and fatigue. These symptoms have been noted in both THC and nicotine-based product users. However, they are more prevalent amongst those who vape THC than nicotine-based liquids. Many patients reported combining these two products. As such, researchers are looking at interactions due to mixing them as a possible cause. In one study, symptoms mirrored a condition called lipoid pneumonia, previously found in patients who inhaled mineral oil.
Another study looked at the effects of vaping on the cells that line the lung surface, also known as lung epithelial cells. They found that vapor from vape pens leads to a buildup of mucus within the lungs, causing them to be inflamed. This disrupts the gas transportation system in the lungs, creating a medium for the growth of various bacteria and viruses, such as the one responsible for the common cold. Most of the illnesses that were reported were relatively acute, so acute uh, as in acute lung injury, so it's like uh, people who vape inhale a substance that causes damage to their little ear sacs and the lining uh, and that can cause acute lung injury or the, the worst case kind of what you call shock lung, like ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome and uh, that can be caused by whatever substance there is. However, it is important to note that there have been a number of studies that have found no adverse health effects of vape use. These results may stem from the fact that a lot of research focuses on legal vendor-bought vapes, when the CDC suggests that the adverse health outcomes could stem from illegally bought, unregulated vapes. Solutions that you buy, even if it's kind of from a legal source, they're not really standardized. Yeah, so there's nothing that says, well, it must have, uh, just like a food label. Yeah, it's not like that you have so many percent of that ingredient and so forth. So they are maybe a bit more controlled, better manufactured if you cut, buy stuff on the street. Uh, I mean, they're, of course, like very handcrafted materials. So not surprisingly, that some, there might be variations. A new ingredient known as thickener is being misused in THC vape carts. The FDA tested 900 vape cart samples. One New York patient who tested his cart found it contained formaldehyde, pesticide, vitamin E oil, and a little dab of THC. There are multiple known contaminants in illicit vape carts that could cause lung injury. But New York health authorities have confirmed that synthetic vitamin E, or tocopherol acetate, is tainting most seized vape carts in New York and 60% of carts in the United States. CannaSafe, one of the United States' top cannabis testing facilities, tested different THC vape carts. They found that the vapes purchased legally from dispensaries contain no pesticides, heavy metals, or leftover solvents such as vitamin E. However, the samples tested which were illegally acquired possessed 13 of 15 samples testing positive for vitamin E. Well, to the young kids, you probably heard about these stories. They don't come only from your parents. They are actually on national news in the whole world. And it says that putting stuff in your lungs that's not supposed to be there is, is dreadful. Uh, to the degree that it can kill young people who had a bright life ahead of them. So don't put any things into your lungs that are not supposed to be in there. I said before, the lungs are made to breathe clean air and don't make it dirty. If you walk around a polluted city crossing, everyone will reach around and say, well, this is stinky here and polluted air and that's not good. Um, so you avoid that. Why would you not avoid vaping as well? So.